Hey guys, my name is Max Legaspi and I'm originally from Pleasanton, California and I'm currently an MPO student at Northwestern University. So being in this profession is kind of like being a modern day blacksmith for helping patients. How cool is that? Also, while I'm in this master's program to become a future OMP practitioner, I'm learning to see and examine patients, make treatment plans with the healthcare and rehabilitation team. Instead of learning how to give medicine to patients, I'm learning how to make devices as part of the patient's treatment. So an orthotic is an external brace that can control or support regions of the body that are weak or deformed. And in some cases, it can even help realign some bones over time. Prosthetics, on the other hand, they're artificial limbs for people who just do not have those limbs. And depending on their everyday activities, it can range from a simple hook to grab objects off the table to a full-on bionic device, almost like the real limb itself. So imagine Usain Bolt, one of the fastest men in Olympic history. Now imagine a shark biting off his leg. Can't really run now, can he? Or say, what if you did have both legs? but they just want to cooperate. That'd be super annoying, right? Well, in order to solve that problem, that's where the O and P practitioners come in. O for orthotics, and P for prosthetics. Our job is to make and fit braces and artificial limbs such as a spinal brace, a foot orthotic, transtibial or transfemoral prostheses, pretty much for those with physical and nerve abnormalities. And as a result, these people are able to have the opportunity to accomplish new goals as well as manage their daily lives a lot better. Now, the bigger question is how do OMP practitioners make this happen in the first place? So on top of talking to patients and giving what they need, we do a lot of behind the scenes work, whether it's before their appointment, during their appointment, after their appointment, or just all of the above. This includes making leg molds, sewing, shaping little devices using heavy machinery, and as well as using hand tools to put all these metal components together into one device. Now, given that we are in a pandemic and that I'm part of a hybrid program where the first half of the year is online, I literally just started going to school on campus in the beginning of January, meaning there's really not a lot that I can show you other than Zoom lectures and studying in my apartment most of the time. But I can give you a tour of the place where I'm doing my in-person classes right now. another lab and this is our machine lab so pretty much here we practice how to take patient assessments how to talk to patients how to take measurements how to transfer them from one chair to another pretty much like all the beginning parts of a regular appointment right now we're focusing more on taking measurements of our lower extremities and upper extremities as well as making observations throughout the human body and taking notes if there's any abnormalities or deformities. Here's where we pretty much do our modifications for the projects we've done. Um, right now we're doing foot orthotics where we have like a phone box. So far what we do on these workstations is just like make markings and just make more imprints before we put in our molds. What we do here is that we use these grinders to take off material or polish as material. So this piece is mainly for taking off material as it gets grinded away. And this one's mostly for polishing and making it look clean and ready to go. Some of these material include different kinds of plastic, foams, corks. These can be used for custom braces or foot orthotics or whatever have you um, that the physician has prescribed to our patients. We haven't gone into this part of the course yet, but here we're supposed to be making like leg molds, um, positive and negative molds. So with these pipes, you can attach the molds that you will be taking from your patients, patients who have amputations. This one's a transtibular below the knee. You pretty much make like a physical model of the person's residual limb and make your sockets for your prosthesis. So here we have these two ovens. It's kind of like your regular baking oven, except it's mostly for just like your materials like plastic and foam and the thing that you need to shape the socket for your prosthesis or your orthosis. Um, these go for pretty high temperatures. So this device is pretty much like a vacuum. 
So whenever you have your mold, you stick it into these pipes right here, and it sucks all the air, but whenever you put in other material like plastic or foam, so that way it'll come and um, shape around the mold that you've made. Hey all, so given that it's my first month being on site, this is pretty much as far as I know in terms of what happens in the facility and what we do. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a, a sneak peek of what it's like as an MPO student. And let's see, how about we just head home and chat for a bit, okay? Hold on, let me, let me drink some water, so. Okay. So you're in middle school or high school and you may or may not have an idea of what kind of career you want five to ten years from now. To be honest, I had no idea what I want to be when I grew up back around those times. And that's okay. Throughout my life, there was a lot of things that I liked to do. Art, sports, anime, science, hardware. And along the way, I also spent time with people that I care about who shared those similar interests. Going back to my roots, my dad, who came from a family that ran a chimney business in the Philippines, taught me not only to how to fix cars and mobile devices, but also showed me how he was inspired by his family business in order to pursue mechanical engineering. When I got into art and science, my mom shared stories of how some of her family members were painters and that they even became healthcare professionals. With my brother, we pretty much bonded and nerded out together by watching anime such as Full Metal Alchemist and Dragon Ball. Y'all know what those are, right? Or, or am I just getting old? And while I partook in some sports such as track and field and martial arts, it was cool making some friends who shared similar interests in improving their skills through exercise. Because for my love for health and science, I pursued a degree in kinesiology exercise science on a PT track during my undergrad. However, when it came close to graduating, right when I finished submitting all of my applications, I, I realized that that was not what I wanted. Um, not gonna lie, I was pretty lost during those four years of college. There were just so many things that I liked doing on top of exercise science, so I don't know, I was, I was just really indecisive during that time. And so, for a solution, I made a bet with myself. If I got into PT school, then I guess I'm gonna keep at it. If I didn't, then I take it as a sign to take the time to reflect and just be honest with myself for once and to pursue what I actually liked. And as you can see, your girl didn't get into PT school. Pretty much by then, it was the last month of college, my senior year, and on top of crying over finals, I also took the time to do some introspection or looking within myself. Looking back at all the things that I liked, art, tinkering, science, exercise, anime. I just thought, why not merge all of them together? So, in conclusion, ONP just made the most sense to me. And here we are. From my own experience, the one advice that I can give you is simply to just pay attention. What you are doing right now, the things that you actually like to learn about and makes you feel more like yourself, just keep doing them. Like, who knows? Maybe it'll come around in full circle one day.